Hello all, welcome to SN Off the Shelf. I'm Chloe Riley, executive editor of Supermarket News, and uh, today we're uh, we're looking at some takeaways from the recent IDDBA show. Uh, we've got SN uh, contributing writer Mark Hamstra with us today. Uh, Mark was recently live on the floor of uh, the IDDBA show, that is the International Dairy Dairy Deli Bakery Show uh, that was in Anaheim, California. Uh, Mark, thank you for, so much for joining us today. Oh, thank you, Chloe. Good to be here. And Mark, where where are you joining us from today? Uh, I'm actually in sunny Los Angeles today, not far from Anaheim, where the IDDBA show was. Nice. Great. Well, welcome. Um, and so, Mark, you know, first off, I think just tell us, you know, tell us about sort of, you know, what was the general mood of the show? Uh, you know, was it busy? Uh, just mm -hmm. just kind of give us a, you know, what was the vibe and the energy there like? Yeah, I think it was, uh, there was a very high energy level there and uh, people were, were thrilled to be back meeting in person after the pandemic. And I think um, just eager to, uh, to uh, capitalize on the, on the momentum that they think uh, uh, retailers have in the prepared foods and, and bakery departments. And uh, there were uh, a lot of great meetings I heard uh, at the vendor booths. Uh, they reported that uh, uh, that uh, there were uh, a, a lot of uh, uh, high-level attendees from retailers uh, in attendance, a lot of buyers and uh, a lot of executives. And uh, I think uh, they had record attendance, so that's uh, great. I think there's a lot of momentum uh, for the uh, this segment of the industry right now. Um, I think uh, the uh, IDDBA said that uh, there were about 200 more exhibitors this year than last year. So uh, it was all very positive. Nice. That's great. That's great. And I know um, this was the first year they had their kind of like what's on the show floor. Uh, it seemed like there was a little mm -hmm. bit more dynamic kind of quality to even, uh, you know, kind of some of the stuff that they were presenting tech wise, I think, um, mm -hmm. from the story we wrote a few months ago, were, were you seeing that? Yes, definitely. They had that, uh, that, uh, live section of the floor, uh, where they, they singled out a, a lot of the, uh, the tech trends and some of the other trends that are impacting, uh, the dairy, deli, bakery, prepared foods area. Um, there were things like a, uh, a robotic cake decorator, a robotic bread maker, uh, which I think has been around at, at some other shows uh, recently. Um, and uh, there was another virtual training uh, thing, uh, a robotic uh, coffee uh, maker. Uh, so I think uh, uh, there's definitely uh, some interest in uh, the potential of technology for this part of the store, although it's still very early and uh, it's going to be a long time coming, I think, before it mm -hmm, really takes yeah, no, off. Mm -hmm. Great. That's great to hear. It sounds mm -hmm. like uh, just a really robust show with a lot of really good energy is what I'm hearing. Um, Definitely. I know that this was the first show, too, with um, IDDBA's new president and CEO, David Hoff. Um, mm -hmm. Mark, I think I know you got the chance to sit down with him. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, give us a sense of, you know, what's his vision like? What's his background? Where is mm -hmm. he coming from? Right. Well, he, uh, David spent the last uh, 20 years uh, with KVAT uh, food stores in uh, out of Abingdon, uh, Virginia, and uh, he was brought on to uh, enhance their food service program and bring it up a level. And he's got a culinary background. He's a trained chef. Uh, he worked in several food service positions before he joined KVAT. So he's really uh, coming on at uh, bringing his expertise here and coming on at a pivotal time, pivotal, pivotal time for the uh, uh, retail prepared foods uh, segment because, um, you know, they're competing with restaurants more than ever. And uh, he's got the uh, the knowledge and the skills and the background, I think, to, to help guide the industry in that direction, which is what he wants to do with IDDBA is really uh, be more uh, supportive of the industry's uh, move in that direction. Mm, that's super interesting. His uh, restaurant background that feels, mm -hmm. you know, like you're saying, observing, that feels sort of intentional at mm -hmm. this time uh, when it's sort of, you know, food at home, home and food away seem to kind of be have been neck and neck sort of for the last uh, couple months in terms of where, you know, consumers are giving their dollars. So mm -hmm. super interesting, but really interesting to see, uh, you know, kind of what he does with this group mm -hmm. moving forward. Mm -hmm. um, 
Mark, what were you seeing and hearing, you know, in terms of kind of what are some of the key challenges retailers are facing right now in, uh, you know, especially in the dairy deli bakery area? Mm -hmm. Well, labor, I think, is the number one challenge and it's being felt across all industries, but it's particularly acute in the uh, in the dairy deli bakery area, prepared foods area, because um, it's such a labor intensive department. You know, you've got people doing the prep work back there. You've got bakers that are a lot of times making things from scratch um, and uh, you've got chefs and uh, service people much more than uh, any other really area of the store. So uh, I think uh, retailers are looking at uh, solutions uh, to help uh, resolve these labor challenges. Um, they're looking at more partially prepared ingredients, uh, more fully prepared ingredients. And in the bakery, they're looking at things like thaw and bake, where you can still provide some freshness without having all the in-store prep work and proof and bake, which allows you to do a little bit more with the product before you bake it. Um, and uh, they're also uh, looking at uh, more than just uh, high pay for uh, workers. I think there's a, there's a sense that uh, uh, workers need to have that, uh, need to know that there's a good corporate culture before they join a company, uh, they need to know that there's possibilities for advancement, uh, and they need uh, a uh, an employer that uh, is flexible around their schedule. Uh, people have, you know, uh, childcare and and uh, other uh, concerns, and uh, retailers, I think, need to uh, realize that they need to uh, take those things into account when they're trying to hire and retain good people. Hmm. Yes, yeah, so it sounds like it's both this um, challenge of, you know, the act streamlining the actual labor of, uh, you know, of these departments. And then, um, and then additionally, it sounds like this is, you know, also an issue of retention and, mm -hmm. um, you know, sort of really listening to these workers about uh, what they need to be successful right now. Mm -hmm. Right. That's very true. Yeah. They, mm -hmm. Go ahead. I, I was going to say, Mark, also, um, uh, in terms of, I know you had noted something about uh, competing with restaurants and mobile and delivery too, that that's mm -hmm. also been an issue. Is that right? Right. That was a major theme at the show, I think, uh, in a lot of the presentations is that, uh, you know, restaurants have really uh, uh, stepped up their game when it comes to uh, mobile ordering and, and the convenience of, uh, of placing orders and getting delivery. And especially for a lot of younger consumers, they, they are really just used to getting on that app and having the, having their sandwiches delivered or their burgers delivered or whatever, whatever, even a coffee from, from, from the coffee shop. Um, I was just talking to some, uh, people the other day who said, Oh yeah, we, my friends and I get together and we just order coffee from the coffee shop together and have it delivered every time we get together. And, um, you know, uh, supermarkets have always relied on that in-store visit for those types of sales for their coffee and deli and bakery and prepared food sales. And so there's going to have to be a little bit of a, of a mind shift, uh, mindset shift, I think, in order to, uh, uh, capitalize on that convenience that uh, that restaurants have come to offer. Yeah, no, I, I think that's so real, Mark. I keep hearing that mm -hmm. over and over right now. Um, I'm, I'm thinking too about, uh, I believe it was Wegmans, right, that has gotten rid of its full service coffee uh, mm -hmm. just a few mm -hmm. months ago um, mm -hmm. because of, you know, citing this very issue that they've just noticed such a, such a shift um, that mm -hmm. may have already been in progress, but that the pandemic really accelerated, um, which is just that people aren't, uh, you know, have different habits, aren't necessarily mm -hmm. coming into the grocery store like that as much um, mm -hmm. to get their coffee like that. So mm -hmm. yeah, re really good observation and interesting that this kind of took up some real space at the show, it sounds like. It did. Yeah, it was definitely brought up at uh, several of the presentations. Mm -hmm. Uh, let's slip over to uh, this idea of indulgence, I think is really mm -hmm. interesting. Um, I know that was one of the messages you picked up on at the show. Um, that was certainly something I was also hearing uh, when I was at the sweets and snacks show in May um, in sure. Chicago. Uh, what's, what's, what's the message here? What, what, what are we talking about when we're talking about, you know, let's encourage a little indulgence. 
Yeah, that's a, it's an interesting uh, concept, and uh, it's it's actually kind of good news for the in-store bakeries. I think um, the the general theme around uh, around this topic at the show was that consumers now think uh, it's okay to indulge a little bit once in a while, to have a cookie or a donut once in a while, uh, and even though they're uh, they're much more consumers are much more focused on their own health. They now view these little treats as uh, part of their overall well-being, their emotional well-being. Their um, uh, it's it's almost a little bit of self-care to uh, you know to deal with the stresses of 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 life by having a donut once in a while, or having a cookie I, once in a while. Yeah, I, I very I very much understand this feeling, Mark. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, I very much I, understand the uh, <laughs> self-care with a donut feeling that seems to be pervading uh, mm -hmm. the industry right now. <laughs> right, right. It's good news for in-store bakeries. And, but, you know, there, there are, uh, one of the interesting things is that, you know, there, there are ways to do it, to, uh, to present your in-store bakery products mm -hmm. um, that, uh, you know, that, that uh, capitalize on this. Um, there was one presentation that showed a store uh, that, uh, had a bakery display and uh, above it was a sign that said sweet dreams are made of treats so it's just sort of a fun little way to subtly remind people that uh, treats are okay they're actually you know good for you in a way and uh, and then uh, there, there are other aspects of it too um, there are ways to to still keep the uh, the treats uh better for you by incorporating uh you know cleaner ingredients uh incorporating whole grains those are really important uh attributes that consumers are looking for so uh it's not just doesn't have to be just a treat it can be a, a little bit better for you treat nice nice i'm also thinking mark uh that what is it sweet dreams are made of treats mm -hmm. i feel mm -hmm. i feel like that has to be an annie lennox reference um yeah. in which case you know, I feel like that also speaks to the store, uh, maybe, you know, speaking very clearly to perhaps the Gen X, perhaps mm. the older millennial like myself. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But, you know, uh, you know, mm -hmm. I think it's very savvy to speak the language of, you know, the people you're trying to sell directly to. So mm -hmm. I appreciate that, too, if that is what that is. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty sure that's what they were. Uh, that's that was the reference there. <laughs> nice. Mm -hmm. um, I want to I want to touch on uh, here at the end. Um, what other trends were you seeing? Um, I know we got a we got a great slideshow up uh, on our site of uh, some photos you took um, from the show floor, but there was some mm -hmm. really great stuff. I know uh, gluten free mm -hmm. was in there. Uh, mm -hmm. Maybe even some some chocolate covered bugs. Um, you yeah. know, tell t tell us what you were seeing there. Yeah, yeah, the the chocolate covered bugs. Uh, uh, I don't know that that had a I guess a curiosity factor there at the uh, at the show. There were um, you know people who were coming just to see it and not necessarily try the bugs. I think people just wanted to see what it was about. But it was it was drawing people to that area of the of the show definitely. Uh, even if they didn't actually uh, try these uh, these uh, roasted ants and uh, other other bugs. I think they had uh, scorpions also. So they had a scorpion, little dried scorpion sitting on top Ooh. of a cupcake. Yeah. Oh my God. Did you, Mark, did you try <laughs> these? The big question. I did, I did not. Uh, strange oh. thing is I actually have a, uh, a shellfish allergy and uh, they, there was a warning there that said, if you have oh. a shellfish allergy, don't try these. So that's my excuse. Oh my gosh. <laughs> sure, Mark. But, uh, right. <laughs> you were, I know you were very eager to try the roasted ants and the scorpion, but. Mm, no, uh, I, it was fun to look at, like, uh, <laughs> like I said, but, uh, yeah, uh, some of the other trends that were, uh, that were there at the, at the show, I think, uh, like you mentioned, gluten-free, um, I think that sort of ties back to this whole uh, uh, question of, of uh, labor costs because gluten, making gluten-free things from bakery items from scratch in the, in the bakery is, is uh, challenging. So um, I think uh, bringing in pre-made gluten-free products or partially prepared gluten-free products is one way that retailers uh, can provide these uh, items that consumers are looking for um, without having to uh, come up with new recipes all the time uh, and, uh, you know, create these products from scratch in the store. There are, uh, seem to be more and more uh, gluten-free 
uh, bakery product suppliers out there that have uh, good high level products that uh, retailers can uh, can merchandise in their stores and, and satisfy that consumer. So that was definitely another one of the of the trends on the floor, I think. And it sounds like maybe some plant based was still there too, right? Uh, yeah, saw, still saw some plant based going strong. Yeah, yeah, definitely uh, a lot of uh, plant based all plant based uh, meat and cheese alternatives, uh, and uh, there was uh, there were some uh, seafood. Uh, alternatives uh, that I saw for the first time. And th those I did try. Uh, and uh, since I'm not really a seafood eater, um, I don't know how much it actually tasted like uh, sushi, but uh, it did look like sushi and it had a little bit different uh, different mouthfeel than uh, you would expect. It, I think it was, uh, I think it's an interesting area that, you know, we're seeing a lot of innovation in. A lot of retailers are uh, are still looking for those uh, plant based alternatives. Cool. Wonderful. Well, Mark, anything else? Uh, you know, anything else that um, was jumping out at you from the show that we didn't touch on, or any kind of final takeaways? Uh, I think uh, uh, the the biggest uh, thing was. Uh, uh, the uh, the whole convenience the the idea of convenience how important that is uh, like we 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 talked about um, restaurants uh, being becoming more convenient with their digital ordering and mobile ordering uh, but I think uh, the idea of having grab and go foods in the deli. Uh, helps with the uh, convenience that retailers can provide, having those pre-made items, anything that helps uh, uh, consumers put dinner on the table with less work and provides uh, solutions uh, in that way, I think uh, it was uh, a major theme at the show. That's great, Mark. So I feel like my, my takeaways from you are, yeah, sort of the convenience and the having the grab and go, uh, mm -hmm. you know, retailers really having to up their, you know, delivery game to sort of match what's happening with restaurants and, mm -hmm. um, and then, you know, don't, don't eat the scorpions. Yes. <laughs> Especially don't eat the scorpions. <laughs> don't ever eat the scorpions. <laughs> All right. Well, great. Well, thank you. It's been another episode of SN Off the Shelf. Uh, you, know, you can find uh, a little bit more of our show notes and we'll put up the slideshow, link to Mark's slideshow from the show floor uh, in the story accompanying uh, this podcast today. And uh, Mark, it's been great. Thanks. Uh, thanks for coming on today. Thank you, Chloe. It's been a pleasure. Take care. 